Hi, today we are going to learn about surgical sutures and ligatures. We try to, we try to see this in the uh, in the point of view of GPAT in a short form. So, what are uh, sutures and ligatures? Actually, they are strings. They are strings, sterile strings. They are sterile strings. Sutures are used on this both sutures and ligatures are sterile strings. Sutures are used on skin or tendon or you can say muscle. So sutures are used on skin, tendon and muscle and your ligatures are used on there again ligatures are sterile strings which are being used on arteries or veins. They are directly used on the blood vessels that is arteries and veins. Next we move on to the classification of surgical sutures and ligatures. So we move on to the classification. They are being classified into two. Uh, once you have a cut, when you have a stitches on that, if that stitch is getting absorbed into the body, we call it as an absorbable suture. If it is want to be removed from the wound, once the wound is been cured, then we call it as a non-absorbable suture. So sutures are divided into two. One is absorbable and another one is non-absorbable. Absorbable in the sense it will get digested into the body. It is get absorbed into the body. So, best example for absorbable suture is cat gut. We try to see more about cat gut in the uh, coming video. Then, non absorbable sutures, they are not digested, they need to be removed from the wound once the wound is been cured. Example is silk, it is made up of silk or cotton, linen, nylon, or you can say metals. So, these are the different types of uh, sutures. Again, your non-absorbable sutures are classified into two. Or you can say metal sutures are classified. Metal non-absorbable sutures are classified into two. One is monofilament. Monofilament. And another one is braided. Monofilament means it will be in smooth. Doesn't have so much strength. To give the strength to the monofilament, we will braided that monofilament, then that uh, monofilament suture will have more strength. So this, uh, this is the classification of your sutures. Now we try to see in detail about what is your cat gut. Now we are going to see in detail about the cat gut in the point of view of GPAT. So we are, what we are going to cover in this, we try to see what are these different names or you can say synonyms from which source we get this cat gut then what are the contaminants in the uh, cat gut how to remove that contaminants means sterilization how to know after sterilization whether the product is sterile or not next finally we'll see what is how we can harden the cat gut how we can harden the cat gut straight we'll move on to the synonyms What are the synonyms of the cat gut? We call it as uh, violin gut. Remember it, these are the synonyms. We have kit gut. We call it as a kit gut, violin gut. We can call it as a surgical gut. Surgical gut. And the final name is, we can also call, uh, call it as a collagen fiber. Collagen fiber. So, source. What are the sources of cat gut? Remember, the name is given cat gut. It doesn't mean it is taken from the gut of the cat. It is been taken from the gut of, you can say, small intestine. It's been taken from the uh, small intestine of sheep or goat. So from the small intestine of the submucosal small intestine where there will be a collagen fiber that is taken from the healthy sheep or goat remember so cat gut is been extracted from the sheep small intestine of the sheep or the goat then what are the contaminants it may contain because it is been taken from the animal source so it may contain bacteria aerobic bacteria or anaerobic bacteria so contaminants 
वी हैव एरोबिक बैक्टीरिया और एनरोबिक बैक्टीरिया सो हाउ इफ इट कंटेन्स दट एरोबिक और एनरोबिक बैक्टीरिया हाउ टू स्टेरिलाइज इट सो नेक्स्ट इज हाउ टू स्टेरिलाइज और हाउ टू प्रिवेंट द कंटामिनेशन how to sterilize the catheter sterilization can be done by three ways we know that we have heat sterilization we have chemical treatment chemical sterilization then we have radiation heat sterilization is done by heating it up to 160 degrees centigrade for 1 hour so heat it till 160 degrees centigrade for 1 hour then after heating because it is a protein it will become stiff it will lose its flexibility dip this into sterile water for injection dip the after treated treated heat treated uh, catgut you need to dip into sterile water for injection for 2 to 3 hours if you do this it will regain its flexibility because due to heat it may lose its flexibility you need to dip into the sterile water for injection for 2 to 3 hours then it will regain its flexibility if you heat more than 160 degrees that collagen will converted into gelatin which is get which is soluble in water we don't want that to happen here so heat it till 160 degrees only then chemical treatment the best chemical is ethylene oxide Okay, you can call it as a gas treatment also ethylene oxide so you can treat it with the ethylene oxide okay the but the problem with ethylene oxide is it is flammable so you need to use 10 is to 90 ratio that is 10% of ethylene oxide and 90% of co2 mixture if we use this mixture instead of calling chemical you can call it as a gas sterilization okay if we use this as a mixture 10 percent ethylene oxide and 90 percent carbon dioxide this is not that much flammable compared to 100 percent ethylene oxide so you can sterilize by this method also next is radiation use gamma radiation how to use this gamma rays take one beaker keep your uh, suture or ligature here radiate with the gamma rays here you should dip it in 90% isopropyl alcohol so you should dip in the 90% isopropyl alcohol so this how you sterilize your cat cat next thing we we'll move on to detection of contamination so if you are sterilizing by heat gas or radiation the best method for this is radiation radiation is the best method for the and most preferred method for the uh, cat cut remember radiation is most preferred method for the cat cut but you need to know whether uh, whatever the sterilization you have done whether it is sterile or not in that case you need to take this sterile sterile treated cat cut keep it in fluid thioglycolate medium into the fluid thioglycolate medium incubate in fluid thioglycolate medium for 14 days after 14 days if you don't find any growth of bacteria it indicates it is sterile if you find any growth of bacteria it indicates it is non sterile and other medium we can also use here is soybean casein digest media you can use soybean medium or fluid thioglycolate medium okay next is then the last part is hardening we want that suture to be hard we want the suture to be hard because we would while stitching the wound we don't want that to be broken so to increase the strength of cat cut remember to increase the strength of this cat cut treat with is treat that cat cut with chromic acid if you treat that catgut with chromic acid if you treat the catgut with chromic acid 
its strength will be increased this how you can increase the hardness of the cat cut so this is the information which i try to give in this lecture i hope you understand thank you